This is one of the great disruptors of the modern era. This changed everything. Before this, childbirth, getting a tooth pulled, even just a scratch could have been a death sentence. Antibiotics. There are many varieties. Streptomycin, erythromycin, doxycycline, cephalosporin, amoxicillin. But they all share a common purpose, to eliminate bacteria. They are weapons produced by microbes to kill other microbes. Antibiotics are natural substances that have been in use for billions of years. But humans only tapped into this ancient arsenal in 1928, and by accident. On returning to his lab from a holiday in the country, British chemist Alexander Fleming noticed that a mold had landed in one of his bacterial cultures and had carved out a kill zone of slaughtered bacteria around it. And from that mold, Fleming isolated the chemical that was killing the bacteria. He called it penicillin. Penicillin was among the first antibiotics to revolutionize medicine, and it saved millions of lives from infections, from war, from surgery, eating a bad oyster, scraping your knee. In fact, the need for penicillin was so great, and the supply of it so small, that patients' urine was filtered to extract the unused portion. Bacteria. The vast majority of them, in somewhere like your gut, aren't doing you any harm, and many are beneficial. But most commercial antibiotics are shock and awe weapons. The antibiotic may have killed off the bad bacteria, but it also destroyed many of the other microbes living in the gut. That rich, diverse microbiome crowds out more malevolent microbes. Salmonella, Campylobacter, terrible cramps, Clostridium difficile, or C. diff, crippling diarrhea, 30,000 deaths a year. It just makes you want to use more and more antibiotics. Kill, kill, kill. The problem with antibiotics is not in their use, but in their misuse. And that creates a second problem. <laughs> You've probably heard about invincible superbugs, bacteria that have evolved to resist antibiotics. Well, three scientists, Michael Baim, Tammy Lieberman, and Roy Kishoni, figured out how to watch that happen. The first thing they do is to build a Petri dish, but a giant Petri dish, about a hundred times bigger than the one Fleming used when he came across penicillin. They call it the Mega Plate. They prepare a nutritious agar jelly that bacteria thrive in, but they've snuck a secret weapon into this agar, antibiotics. They pour it into nine separate bands, each with different concentrations of antibiotic. Then they start growing bacteria, E. coli. On the outside bands, there's no antibiotic, just the agar. The next bands in have just enough antibiotic to kill most E. coli. Inside those, 10 times as much, then 100 times. And finally, the center band has a 1,000 times as much antibiotic. On day one, you can see E. coli reproducing just fine in the area with no antibiotic, up until they reach the border with the one times zone, where they normally can't survive. But then, a mutant strain appears. It has evolved a way to avoid being poisoned, and it spreads until it reaches the next boundary with the 10 time zone. Now, new mutants with even stronger resistance begin to spread across the 100 time zone, and then finally, the hardiest E. coli mutants of all make it into the 1000 time zone. And the time it took for this population of E. coli to evolve this super resistance? 11 days.
And when we watch the plate, really we're watching evolution happening at warp speed. One of the reasons for that is that bacteria reproduce much faster than we can. E. coli can divide in as few as 20 minutes. So here's a family tree that shows the relationships between the strains on the plate. And it shows us how resistance to antibiotics evolves. Over the course of 11 days, this strain continued to acquire mutations that made it ever more resistant to the antibiotic all the way to the thousand band. But this one did not. When bacteria are exposed to antibiotics, those with mutations that allow them to survive the attacks are the only ones left standing. And when those mutant microbes reproduce, they create a population of super-resistant bugs. So what's happening on the plate is a really good illustration of what's happening at a much larger scale all around the world. And it's not just when we use antibiotics on ourselves. We also put these drugs in animal feed and water to stop outbreaks of livestock disease before they have a chance to happen. Those antibiotics can cause resistant bugs to evolve in animal populations and then spread into crops or even into humans. So when we use antibiotics, we are actually driving the evolution of resistant bacteria, which is not a new problem. Bacteria have always been evolving ways of resisting the things that try to kill them. And now, the overuse of antibiotics is exacerbating that problem. In fact, Fleming himself was aware of the risk. He said that when we overuse antibiotics, we are morally responsible for the deaths of those who succumb to infections. Now, I am not suggesting that we stop using antibiotics altogether. We just need to get smarter about when and how we use them. For example, Antibiotics are meant to treat bacterial diseases. They are useless against viral diseases like colds and flu. So using antibiotics to treat a cold is like using a hammer to fix a leak. It won't work, and it'll probably make matters worse. And this trend of killing anything bacterial goes way beyond just antibiotics. We also put antibacterial chemicals in soaps and hand gels and toys, even socks. And I don't think that's something that Alexander Fleming would have approved of. To him, bacteria weren't just things to be destroyed. Amazingly, he created this germ art using microbes as his medium even though he discovered the most effective weapons against bad bacteria, he understood that bacteria could be beautiful, sometimes helpful, and certainly everywhere. If you're especially curious about the story behind this episode, check out the link below for an article that dives even deeper into these amazing microbes. And don't forget to follow us on Facebook and subscribe to our channel for more weekly videos. Thanks for watching.